Good morning, gentlemen. So you've been traveling, doing a little stuff last week. You actually joined us by phone last week. Uh, you had, I think, some, some one of your investments, one of the things you do is hotels. Yeah, we had a great grand opening over in uh, Conway, South Carolina. The Fairfield Marriott just opened, and we do this from time to time. I have a special project coming up that I wanted to surprise you and Ted and the audience uh, with. I will. I have the privilege of traveling to Riga, Latvia, which is right on the Russian border. I will be there between the 13th and 18th of November. And I want uh, WXMI, WFOR to enjoy the longest telephone call live. So <laughs> 7.15 a.m. Biloxi Wait. Hattiesburg time will yes. be about... 3.15 in the afternoon in FIA. So That'd be cool. I, I'll be giving you a call if I can. Um, it's strictly vacation, so we're just going there. And it's just nice to talk and see the different parts of the world. And this is one of those areas which was formerly part of Russia in the early, early days and seceded uh, when uh, USR, USSR became Russia. And it's truly a, a constitutional Democrat republic, and the folks there really pride themselves on their close relationship with the United States. So this will be a fun event. I look forward to doing it with you, if I can, if I can put it together. Yeah, that'll be great. Interesting place. You know, I've never been in any of those former Soviet states, I guess, but actually I've been to Russia, which is, you know, it's interesting about Russia, and I don't know if you've ever been, but... I found Russia to be one of the most beautiful countries I've ever seen. I mean, it was just gorgeous. I, I went to a Black Sea town called Norovisk and, and stayed there for, for about a week one time. And let me just tell you, I, I was really, you know, it's just, it just goes to show you. I mean, it's a beautiful country. The people look like us when they're walking down the street. You you think, you know, that I, this could be any city in America. But their political system is so different, and it makes such a huge difference in the way that country acts. It's just amazing. Oh, boy, that's true, Michael. In fact, they're in the process now of helping Iran and Lebanon arm up for a potential counterattack against Israel. We'll see what happens. But, boy, we have ourselves a, a, a mess on so many fronts in Israel we can talk about. But I'm still stuck on our southern border. And I'm still stuck on the fact that a terror suspect was just released. Uh, he, This person came over the border. He was part of the 167 terrorists that have crossed that we know of. <laughs> the question is, how many do we not know of? I'm concerned about terrorist cells now fermenting in the woods of the United States of America, while our attention is focused on Israel and Ukraine, all these divert, deflect, and distractions that are taking our eyeball off our southern border, and then you listen to some of these ding-dongs coming over the line thinking Joe Biden walks on water for letting him in in the first place with all the freebies. So I'm, I'm kind of done with it. I want him out. So our border is is the biggest problem that's facing this country today. It's not the war in in Iran or excuse me in Israel, although that could be a very serious issue at some point for the United States. The problem I worry about every day is how many of those Iranian terrorists have made it across our border. How many Hamas rebels? have made it across our border border and, and are getting together to plan something in one of our cities, very similar to what happened at 9-11. They're going to do it again. They saw the effectiveness of what happened, and they will never stop doing what they do, which is which is export terror to other parts of the world. That, that will continue to happen. And we've got a president and an administration that has totally – not only allowed it, but encouraged it. You remember my quote from Deuteronomy a few weeks ago, foreigners who live in your land will gain more and more power while you gradually you lose yours. 
They will have money to lend you, but you will have none to lend them. In the end, they will be your rulers. We have got to nail these folks and get them the heck out of the country. There, It's just a complete debacle of, of errors and missteps under this Biden administration that I, I'm not sure we can wait till November 2024 for another election. You know, we always say, oh, let's just vote them out. We'll just wait till the next election and vote them out. No, we don't have time to wait till the next election to vote them out. We want them out now because they have failed us so materially. Uh, uh, it, it's it's not right what's happening, and America is suffering. Yeah, no question about it. It's it's the biggest tragedy, and the the the, the largest falsehood about the whole thing is is how the Alexandria Mayorkas, who is the the uh, what what whatever the border czar, whatever. I mean, he says every time he sits down with, with the politicians in Washington for for an interview or for a, a testimony, he says the border is secure. I mean, okay, it's secure because he said so, right? I saw that yesterday on the news, and I'm stunned. The can what is it? The Missouri senator, what is it? Tom Tom Keene, Josh Was Holly, it jo Josh yeah. Holly nailed him and the first time i saw such a com uh, a calm demeanored individual get so inflammatory he blasted my orcus because he continued to say it was a protected border and on the other hand he nailed my orcus because he was saying that what was it the issue with oh boy it just dropped out of my head the i, I, I can't help you <laughs> it, he was it, oh oh that one of his staff people was uh supporting the Palestinian jihad and thought the Israelis the the protest was against Israel and that this staff person with the United States government was supporting was supporting the Palestinian Israel jihad on in government I, right. I just no, can't get over the employee that they were talking about yeah that's what I'm talking about and, and so that that person, he asked specifically, is that person been fired? He said he can't talk about personnel issues. And so then he further asked him, is that not something that you can fire people for? I mean, why is that person still working for the United States government? And of course, he has no answer for that. But, you know, we've got basically what's happened is, is we've got people that run our government, people that are inside of our government, people that are in our cities, in our a local politics that are sympathetic to Hamas and to the Palestinians and the terrorists, and yet the good people that live in Israel who just want to live in peace are the ones that are at fault. It, it is just amazing to me how this has been turned on its head. Everything is upside down. You you said turned on its head. I heard you earlier this morning talking about the abuse that Trump, Donald Trump and the Trump family has taken through unjust prosecution, selective prosecution. And two days earlier, I'm listening to uh, candidate Ron DeSantis, my governor, appearing on Joe Scarborough's MSNBC morning show and saying that if Donald Trump is found guilty in any way, of politically of the politically motivated kangaroo court cases against him he should drop out of the presidential race that's totally unbecoming of desantis to say that uh, you know desantis also said that trump's campaign appears to be about trump owned issues but trump's issues that are hurting trump is him today and you and me tomorrow that's Trump's yeah. issue. And boy, I'll tell you what, you just think of the scenario we're dealing with in the world scene today. I'll take Donald Trump's tweets any day of the week. I'll also take a dollar 89 cents a gallon. Yeah, that is a fact. Gasoline, you know, the, the very first thing that Joe Biden did when he came to office was to make it harder for us to get oil out of the ground here in the United States. And that has created a situation where, you know, now we're no longer, I guess, you know, being able to supply the demand that's out there. And that creates prices go up when when the demand is high and the 
the supply is low. I mean, that's just the, the law of sl supply and demand. It's pretty simple, actually, in economics. You know, we got a major w potential world war talking about over there in Israel. And we're focusing on these issues here, not because we're, dis we're, we're disrespectful of Israel's plight, but Michael, you and I have overlooked some of the things in our own backyard. Why? Because America is compassionate. NATO or no NATO, UN or no UN, you and I and the rest of the folks listening and the nation at large has been a society of compassionate individuals who've always worried about human rights, regardless of the governance and the authority or jurisdiction. And we can, should continue to be that way. But would someone in the world step up and show us some care and concern about our southern border as we're concerned about their borders overseas? Come on. Yeah, it's terrible. And, you know, the other thing I was thinking of when you were talking is these people, these, these college students, just to show you how dumb we are when we are in college, because you and I were both dumb, too, at one time. We figured it all out eventually. But but you got LGBTQ people wearing a Palestinian or, excuse me, flying a Palestinian flag and an <laughs> LGBTQ flag. And, and, you know, you have to wonder just how dumb can you be? Because if they were in Palestine or any Arab country and did that, they would be subject to the death penalty. Yeah. I mean, it, they, it's, these, they'll throw them off a building. These, they, they'll throw them off a building. And that's, that's a good thing because these ding dongs wouldn't have to pay the rest of their student loan. They're going to walk away from. Yeah, we would we would have to eat that one. But th they are they're just dumb. I mean, these people just don't have a clue of what's going on. And you just have to wonder or, you know, I, I tell you, it's just you, you just got to be hopeful that eventually these people will figure out yeah. how dumb they are. Well, I, 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 don't, I don't know. Real quick, switching gears back to Israel. The Biden crime family is trying to link the uh, request for funding for Ukraine to the uh, $14.5 billion that Israel needs right now. It's more of the deceit and deception of money coming back to the Biden crime family uh, in that tranche. They want to put some sort of a combined bill. It's a it's a morphed omnibus bill of sorts. But I strongly support the notion of two separate bills, one for Israel and our level of giving and the facts that justify that level of giving, separate and apart from what we choose to do for Ukraine. Uh, it's it's coming down. We've got, what did I hear this morning? About 5 million phone calls went out to the folks in the Gaza to gear up one at 1 1.2 million leaflets today are being dropped from the air saying clear the clear the area in Gaza escape do what you have to do to get out Israel has been deliberate and responsible in its approach to get ha Hamas without killing Palis Palestinians or hostages yeah, but it's idea. Israel's That's war let them go thank you for joining us Pal, we appreciate it. Have a great weekend. You too, guy.